bit from Kent Police, yeah. okay, and just listen to what this officer is going to say to you. Mate, it's 5.35, yeah. I'm arresting you on the confession of the murder of Alexandra Morgan, okay? We believe that you were the last person that Alexandra Morgan was to be alive with. This is the case of a lady whose final hours were caught on surveillance camera, but she was never found. Where did she go? And who was she with? The truth turned out to be much more frightening than anyone could have ever imagined. This is Unsolved Files, a place where crime stories are being brought to your doorstep. What are you waiting for? Just hit the subscribe button for more fascinating and suspense-filled crime stories. Now, let's get back into this story and uncover this mystery. Alexandra Morgan, often known as Alex to her loved ones, was the single mother of two kids, ages four and 11 at the time. They were residents of Cranbrook, Kent's Wilsley Pound. She did not keep up her relationships with her children's fathers, and she did not have an easy time raising them by herself either. Alexandra also worked as a dog groomer. Others saw her as an ambitious, vivacious mother who wanted the best for her children. She made a number of efforts to give her children a better life she desired for them. However, Alexandra planned a meeting with her parents on November 13, 2021. She said she was going on a spa trip with friends and left her two kids with them, promising to return in three days. When Alexandra failed to pick up her kids on November 17th and didn't return calls or texts, her parents started to panic. It was very unusual of her. The parents had to call the police after multiple attempts to locate their missing daughter had failed. Alexandra Morgan just vanished, and Kent police indicated that something odd about it suggested a possible crime. Upon initiating the investigation, the police tried to ascertain which spa Alexandra intended to visit. She informed her parents she was going with friends, and the cops wanted to know who they were. The detectives were unable to even imagine the difficulties they would encounter in their quest for Alexandra at that point. In an attempt to find the woman, the police in Cranbrook got video footage from a gas station. It was the last place anybody saw her, and her white Mini Cooper was the key to determining her location. She stopped for gas on the morning of November 14th, made a few purchases, and drove off. This video appears to be normal at first sight. Alexandra has been close with the gas station manager, Rose McCauley, for 17 years. On the morning of her disappearance, Alexandra ordered a coffee and a snack in addition to buying 10 pounds of gas. However, Rose asserted that nobody appeared to be aware of Rose's whereabouts or what happened to her. It is a mystery that her car hasn't been seen since then. When asked by the detectives, she told them that she had searched Hastings with a friend for Alex's car, but they were unable to locate anything. She doesn't think Alex is scared to come home because she never feels humiliated, and she simply hopes that nothing terrible has happened to her. When Alex arrived on Sunday, she was dolled up, looking very well-groomed with her hair done, makeup applied, and great clothes on. She went to the gas station extremely early in the morning, which was unusual for her, and she was more dressed up than she had ever been. As the investigators spoke with Alexandra's friends, they learned that she had disclosed on social media in 2018 that a stalker was following her around. Stop stalking my page, lovelies. It's quite sad. Not only that, but you're making it more obvious by the day, as we are not even friends on Facebook, Alexandra said in a 2019 post. There's nothing to see here, pal, unless it's my desire. I'll upload your antics for everyone to see if you keep doing this. I hope you have a wonderful day. At this point, the police were attempting to determine whether these texts were connected in any way to her disappearance. According to a police spokesman, Alexandra's decision to stay silent on her family was totally out of character, and the matter would be investigated as possible murder. They also requested and begged anyone who saw Alexandra or her white Mini Cooper with a black roof to get in touch with them. They described Alexandra as a five feet, six inches tall woman with a thin body and shoulder-length brown hair. She was wearing a silver necklace, rugged black pants, knee-high black boots, and a green knee-length quilted coat when she was last seen. Sometimes people disappear without leaving any evidence or clues for the authorities, and many missing person cases go unresolved. But this time was exceptional. Through the use of digital footprints, the police were eventually able to determine Alexandra Morgan's whereabouts. It also disclosed a few startling secrets. In an attempt to better her financial circumstances, Alexandra began working as an escort and marketing her services online. However, her friends and family were unaware of it. 
Basically, escort workers who are women are among the most vulnerable groups of people. Nobody, not even the police, is unaware of it. They never know who might be their next customer, a crazy person seeking a victim, or just a regular person who, for whatever reason, has opted to pay for such services. The investigators found out that before going missing, Alexandra scheduled a meeting with her usual client. When this man was eventually taken into custody, the police spokesperson stated that Alexandra was sadly no longer alive. A 40-year-old St. Leonard's on Sea resident was taken into custody on Thursday, November 25, 2021, on suspicion of murder. The Sussex police assisted Kent police in searching three different locations. Going forward, locals should anticipate more police presence in the area as they continue their search for Alexandra. However, Mark Brown, who happened to be a construction worker and was married with a son, was apprehended by the police. His family was unaware that he was living two lives in the interim. He had seen Alexandra multiple times before her disappearance. The Sussex police claim that Mark once gave Alex a Mini Cooper. Following an appointment set up through adult work, Brown initially met Alexandra for sex at her Sissinghurst, Kent home on June 8th. They continued to see each other periodically after that, and everything went smoothly. Almost two weeks later, on June 21st, they had their second meeting. This time, Alexandra visited Brown's rented property, Little Bridge Farm in Hastings, Kent, for meetings with women and other uses. They met seven more times in August and September, and Alexandra never realized that she was progressively sinking into a trap. Apparently, Brown messaged her on WhatsApp on October 23, 2021, asking if she would be interested in an escorting job that may pay up to 100,000 pounds a significant sum of money, three to five days at a hotel he would be watching, a new ID, a straight car, and shopping money were all mentioned in the proposition. All he asked her to do was grab some cash, head outside for a cigarette, and make some purchases. However, the online searches Alexandra conducted following this suggestion attested to her character and her desire to improve her children's lives. A search for minimum deposit for a house in 2021 inches came up. Additionally, other searches revealed that Alexandra intended to use the money she would make to start other companies. Among the queries typed into Google were, how much money may be made in the UK operating a sunbed shop? And how much tax would I have to pay for a hundred thousand pounds? Alexandra was actually going to meet Mark Brown at the farm when she told her parents she was going to the spa with her friends. On November 14th, she left the house and at 7.20 a.m., CCTV footage showed her at Cranbrook Petrol Station purchasing. At about 8 in the morning, she arrived at Little Bridge Farm. After swapping Alexandra's license plate for a fake one, Brown transported her car to Homehurst Lane, St. Leonard RS, three days later, on November 17th. After her daughter stopped taking calls and texts and did not pick up the kids on November 18th, Alexandra's mother went to the police. The police discovered CCTV footage on November 23rd, which showed Alexandra's vehicle behind Brown's Jaguar as it traveled to Little Bridge Farm. But before they could enter the farm, Kent police began questioning Brown. He acknowledged that he had met Alexandra, but said that she had gone after 45 minutes. He said that the police might take his fingerprints and a DNA sample. Brown was taken into custody as the primary suspect in the Alexandra Morgan case two days later, on November 25th. But what happened to Alex Morgan? Now, before we go any further, Let's go back to the time when Alexandra had not yet met Mark Brown. Leah Ware was a 33-year-old mother of three children, but she was not granted custody of them. Leah loved animals. She had two dogs, a Mastiff named Duke and a Pomeranian named Lady, in addition to her horse and three goats. Apparently, it appears that Leah first interacted with Mark Brown on March 25, 2018, when he contacted her through an escort website where she was promoting her services. Brown first connected with Alexandra Morgan on that same website. Brown and Ware had begun dating at the end of 2018 and had taken out a joint apartment rental. She relocated into Brown's yard at Little Bridge Farm, where she resided in a shipping container after the lease expired six months later. As word spread that Leah had an unstable lifestyle, Brown compared their relationship to riding a roller coaster. She was a benefit claimant, receiving weekly payments into her account that Brown frequently took out on her behalf. Evidently, she has a history of using illegal substances and suffering from mental health issues. She was reportedly making a lot of effort to obtain custody of her kids, though. Leah's mother described her daughter as an angel and mentioned that, although Leah had never been a big fan of school, 
she had always preferred her animals. Meanwhile, Ware and Brown were together for three years before she vanished in May 2021 without leaving a trace. Leah consumed those narcotics together with her buddy Jack Tyler, a convicted drug dealer, during the late hours of May 5th and early May 6th. They had a close friendship that evening. It was also the last time anyone saw Leah. Her phone was last used to make a call on May 7th at 8.55 a.m. that day. The police thought she had passed away. Mark Brown went back to the website where he first met Leah on June 8, 2021, two weeks later. Alexandra first met Brown at her house a month after she vanished into thin air. Their encounter went well. Alexandra thought Brown was a generous and decent man, but she was unaware that he was actually a monster. Five days after meeting Alexandra Morgan, Brown wrote some very telling letters to his high school lover, which the police discovered during the course of the inquiry. But Leah Ware was the subject of these texts, not Alexandra. The statement they gave was as follows. I'm going to be very careful how I describe this. It happened again not too long ago when disposing of something. And hey presto, there's not very much left. It gets very, very hot. And it glows practically white. My heart, mind, and soul are all greatly burdened by the things that I have done. It's truly a joke. I'm a psychopath with a conscience. Investigators began to suspect that Alexandra Morgan was dead, and even more horrifyingly, that she was not Mark Brown's only victim. The police searched Brown's land on November 25, 2021, following his apprehension. They discovered a barrel there that had just had something burned in it. Experts opened it up and discovered teeth and bone remnants. It seems that a lab analysis proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that these were Alexandra Morgan's bones. Neil Kimber of Kent Police and Andy Wilston of Sussex Police expressed their condolences to the families of Alexandra and Leah in a joint statement. Even though they had found Alexandra's remains at this trying time, they had not yet located Leah, and their investigations were still underway. About a month passed until the hunt on Brown's farm was called off on January 7, 2022. The cops discovered a Pomeranian dog's bones in the water, along with some weight fastened to its collar. But investigators thought it was Leah's dog, the one Brown so passionately threw out when Leah passed away. On February 1, 2022, Authorities accused Brown of Leah Ware's death despite not being able to locate her body. Brown refuted the accusations made against him during the questioning. But he acknowledged Alex's death when they showed him the evidence that showed he had burned her body. However, Brown insisted that Alexandra's death was the result of an accident. On October 17, 2022, Mark Brown's trial began, and during the court proceedings, new information regarding these two cases came to light. But after Leah Ware vanished, the jury was informed that Brown had been taking money out of her bank account on a regular basis. Following Leah's disappearance on May 7, 2021, Brown picked up her prescription medication and used her new bank card to withdraw cash every week from a cash point. They brought the card to his sister Cheryl's address. After that, he would place the money and medicine in a horse box that belonged to their pet, Bertie. In the meantime, Duncan Atkinson, the prosecution's attorney, described several instances in the weeks following Leah Ware's disappearance when Brown withdrew 200 pounds from her account, which was the highest amount permitted in a transaction, and resulted in Leah's balance dropping from almost 2,000 pounds to 45 pounds. Brown took 200 pounds out of Leah Ware's account twice in July 2021. A little while later, he added 200 pounds to his account. When questioned why he had done this, he couldn't give a reasonable explanation. According to a friend of Leah's who testified during the trial, she said Leah seemed to want Brown to divorce his wife for her. Perhaps it had some bearing on Brown's choice to carry out this atrocity. Brown emphasized that Alexandra Morgan's death was an accident during the trial about her death. He said that in the workshop he hired at Little Bridge Farm, Alexandra tripped and fell over a tool, injuring her skull. Furthermore, he claimed that after seeing how much blood was on her, he rushed up to her and tried to stop the bleeding from her head with a towel. There was more blood when he moved her head to put the cloth underneath it. Duncan Atkinson, the prosecution's attorney, objected, questioning why he hadn't called an ambulance when he initially saw the woman bleeding on the ground. Brown, however, retorted that he became too anxious to think about anything else, and that the only thing on his mind was to fetch a towel to halt the bleeding. Brown declared that he was sure that Alexandra Morgan had died after trying CPR and checking her breathing with a mirror held to her lips and nose. About five minutes later, he ran outside to throw up, took his phone out of his car to summon the emergency authorities, 
and used jumpers to block blood from running out from under the workshop door. I wrapped Alex in a sleeping bag and put a towel around her head to stop more blood from coming out, he said, deciding to hide the entire incident. It was a foolish thing to do, and it was the worst mistake I had ever made in my life to have a dead escort on my workshop floor. How would it seem, and how would I prove she had an accident? However, later that year, Brown decided to burn Alexander's body in an incinerator he had constructed from an old oil drum and used on a regular basis. I didn't want anyone to come across a body dumped somewhere because I'd heard urban stories about people burning bodies, he said. Despite this, Brown maintained that he wasn't aware of Leah Ware's disappearance and thought she was still alive. However, Alan D.S., Brown's supervisor, testified in court throughout the trial. The man claimed that on November 24th, Brown had warned him that he might be targeted by the police and taken into custody. Brown made a vital remark when D.S. questioned what the police may charge him for, and he answered, a double murder, indirectly acknowledging Leah Ware's death and that of Alexandra Morgan. However, Brown denied having said those things. I only told him that I would be leaving for 25 years. I don't know where he got the word double. I said I would be arrested for one murder. I didn't say double, he remarked. According to Atkinson, the correct response to the question of who you killed should have been none. In response, Brown replied that while he accepted Alex's murder was because no one would believe his own side of the story or the reason behind my actions. Sadly, both of them died due to unjust circumstances, despite being mothers, daughters, and much more to their loved ones. They both fell into the hands of a malevolent madman, ruining families and leaving behind children. The jury at Hove Crown Court was given information on Leah Ware's and Alex Morgan's lives during the murder trial, from their childhoods to their relationships, jobs, and passions for their children. A jury consisting of 10 men and two women found 41-year-old Brown guilty on all counts on December 1, 2022. According to Judge Nicholas Hilliard, this is undoubtedly a very serious case, and the impact on the victims' families must be painful. Furthermore, he said that the court would sentence Brown to life in prison and that he would have to determine the minimum sentence or consider Brown's release on parole. Additionally, the judge stated that he would consider Brown only if he could disclose what he did to Leah Ware and then determine the appropriate sentence for him. But Brown did not seize the opportunity. Meanwhile, Rebecca Martin, the mother of Leah Ware, gave a victim impact statement to the court before the judge handed down his punishment. She claimed that by withholding the truth about what happened to her, Brown continued to cruelly torment their family. She stated that Leah lost her life because Brown wished to satisfy his heinous cravings. He managed and controlled every aspect of her daughter's life, and when he had had enough of her, he threw her away like trash. Are they just going to sentence him like that without finding out what he actually did to Leah Ware? That's unbelievable. On the other hand, the parents of Alex Morgan also spoke in court, describing their daughter as brilliant, vivacious, and driven to achieve her goals. She loved her two children, and although she had challenges, she was rising above them and looking forward to the future. The court handed down two life sentences to Mark Brown on January 13, 2023. He will be eligible to seek parole after 49 years. Brown was sentenced in his absence by Judge Hilliard, following his refusal to appear in court. Judge Hilliard stated, No sentence I impose can be comparable with the loss of life. Nothing can make right the wrongdoing of the defendant. That is impossible. His actions have not troubled his conscience. Can you imagine that he was even absent from his own hearing? What do you think about this case? Was the judgment a fair one? Well, let us know in the comments section below what happened in Taiwan. The murder case shocked public Taiwan 2006.